Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? It's day two in the UK for me, so I'm operating on lots of Red Bull. I talk extraordinarily fast even without having Red Bull, so I will do my best not to be too hyper, which is going to be very difficult for me. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about digital disruption and open source and uh, how you can deliver fantastic web experiences with open source and then some of the myths about open source CMS. I am at T Wentworth 12 on Twitter. If you want to say good things or terrible things about my presentation, uh, I'll be glad to hear both. So uh, feel free to, to tweet along. A little bit about my company, Acquia. Uh, we were founded in 2008 uh, by the gentleman that founded the open source project Drupal. That's what we're most, uh, most known for. We're a uh, private company outside of Boston, as we say back in the States, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, we are the largest or the fastest growing privately held software company in North America. So we've had some great success over the last couple of years. We're about 320 employees and we've got a, a large presence here in the UK. A little bit about me and that picture of me was after I got done, uh, done singing George Michael's Careless Whisper at our sales kickoff, thus the white jacket. This gentleman over here runs our UK sales group. He was my guitar player. I will not be singing Careless Whisper here today, unfortunately. I guess if you requested it, I probably could. Uh, but I spent most of my entire career working at commercial CMS companies. Uh, so I worked at a, a CMS pioneer called Interwoven, which became Autonomy, which became HP. And then most recently, I was a CMO at Ektron, another content management company. And I joined Acquia uh, a couple of months ago in 2012. All right, so here's what we're about to talk about today, and that is digital strategy. And my hypothesis is that for many organizations, the web or digital strategy is broken. And the idea is that we have all of these different customer touch points. So think of your organization, how many different ways your customers can interact with you. They can interact on your website. They get emails from you. They get social media shares from you. They land on your www site, your customer portal, your partner portal. Your employees land on your intranet, right? So we have all of these customer touch points that are all probably running a series of fragmented technologies. So the reality in most organizations is that we have lots of different platforms, lots of products, lots of architectures. This is disparate systems, fragmented experiences. It's difficult to manage. But I think the most important point is we're presenting a pretty poor customer experience. So how many of you in here are in marketing? Good, because this is a marketing show. So I'm really glad that you're in marketing. Um, our, I think, so I run marketing as well, and my charter where I focus a lot on is the customer experience, right? The customers are what matter to me. It's how I pay my salary. It's how the company grows revenue. Um, if we're going to think about customer experiences, we've got to think holistically about how we interact with our customers. And my belief is that we do generally a pretty bad job at this. Um, so when you think about how we organize marketing teams, today we do it in channels. We have the web marketing team, the email marketing team, the social media marketing team, we have the analytics team, right? So what we end up doing is having, does that resonate, right? We have market, all these different teams and marketings and we try our best to get along, but often what ends up happening is we have these separate technologies, we have these separate silos in marketing, and it's really hard to deliver an experience to this person because this person, our customer, doesn't really care about our channels. Our customers don't see the channels that we market to. They see our company holistically. They see our brand and our products holistically. So if we don't stop thinking about ourselves as, I do digital marketing, I don't worry about this part of it, or I'm just a social media marketing person, I don't care about the website, we're never going to deliver that optimized customer experience that's going to help us meet our goals as marketers. So that's, I think, is one of the, the big opportunities that we have in digital marketing is to provide more of this unified, holistic experience. And I think one of the great platforms for doing this is the open source CMS product, Drupal. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about Drupal as we go forward. Uh, Drupal is entirely open source. You can go download it for free on, on uh, drupal.org. And what many large digital organizations are doing is building out this sort of unified customer experience platform on top of this open source product that can address the customer channels again, social, mobile sites, websites, partner portals, customer portals, all from the perspective of this unified platform. Now Drupal is kind of an interesting product. A little bit about the history of Drupal. This gentleman here with the spiky hair, and that's really his hair every day. 
I don't know how he does it. I, if I had hair that cool, I mean, I just, just I'm marveled at how just cool Dries looks in pictures. Um, so Dries uh, Buitart, a uh, Belgian gentleman who now is, uh, lives in, uh, in America and really has just dis dislikes everything about America pretty much, except for beer. Uh, Dries built Drupal when he was in college. So he built it as a message board, as a way for he and his classmates uh, to better share information. So he built out this message board uh, way back in 2001. This became Drupal, and now uh, these people build Drupal. So Dries made the very smart decision of open sourcing Drupal way back in the day, releasing it out to the community, and now Drupal is one of, if not the most active open source project in the world. So what's great about open source is it's not controlled by Acquia, it's not controlled by any vendor, it's controlled by the community. So there are, as you'll see in a, in a few minutes, there are thousands and thousands of developers that contribute to Drupal in multiple formats, and that really leads to having a very successful product that can do lots of different things, some of which I'll share with you, um, and that's one of the great benefits of open source in general. But what we find in practical terms is a lot of, of sort of FUD, fear and uncertainty and doubt about open source. So a lot of organizations, although open source, you know, Linux is a good example of a very pervasive open source project, but how many of you guys today use open source? How many of you would never, ever, ever use open source and you think it's, it's a terrible thing that should never have existed? There's one of them back there. He hates open source. Um, there are lots of organizations that still uh, that still don't believe in open source, and there are lots of vendors that perpetuate myths about open source. So today I'm going to talk about some of these myths and, and share with you some of the, the practical realities of, of where open source really lives. So some of the, uh, the myths we'll talk about is first that open source is just for blogs and simple sites. One of the most co common known open source products is WordPress, right? Everyone, a lot of people know WordPress, good example of open source. So there's definitely lots of, of mistaken perceptions about you know, what you can do with open source CMS products. Uh, the second one is that open source isn't secure. It's one I hear a lot. Well, op isn't open source risky? Isn't it going to be easy to hack and break into? Something we hear. The third is that open source won't scale. Open source, it's great, but you know, the minute you get more than a few users on your site, your site's going to crash. The fourth one is that open source requires tribal knowledge. So if I go with open source, how am I ever going to, to maintain it? How am I ever going to build my sites? And then lastly, open source won't work well with my marketing tools. It's my belief uh, that there are a lot of great, even at this show, there are a lot of great marketing companies. There's Eloqua, there's Marketo, there's Pardot, there's Neolane, there's Silverpop, there's Exact Target, lots of great tools. And if we're going to think about customer experience as the goal in marketing, we have to be really smart about making sure that our CMS integrates with all of our other marketing tools. And uh, one of the myths about open source is it doesn't integrate with my marketing tools, and I'll talk about that. So let's talk about myth number one, that open source is just for blogs and for simple sites. And certainly, you can build a blog and a simple site on open source, but I think some of the, the largest, most interesting sites in the world are built on these open source products. So here's one that you should be familiar with. Last Wednesday, uh, we had the Brits, and uh, it sounded like it was a fantastic event. This uh, event and this site was powered by Drupal. So what's interesting about this story is, um, you know, most of the year, this site gets almost no traffic at all. Right, so, you know, the two times a year it gets traffic are when the, uh, the nominees are announced and when the awards happens. But when the awards happens, this site gets 100x the amount of traffic it normally gets. And a good example, when the site hits, Drupal able to deliver this site flawlessly. And the team at the Brits were publishing updates in live in real time. So as, as awards were won, as videos were taken backstage, this site was kept up to date on top of the Drupal platform. So kind of a really good example of, of again, for media where open source and Drupal's had some success. Another big uh, area is for world causes. So we have a lot of, uh, there are a lot of nonprofits and charitable organizations uh, that are built on top of Drupal. So we'll see some of them here flip through. Uh, the World Economic Forum is one good example uh, of somebody who uses uh, open source uh, in the uh, nonprofit world. Uh, for higher ed, another really good example is the SBS, one of the, the largest or the, one of the most prestigious business schools. They were using a product called SharePoint previously and were struggling with the ability to let business people edit content with SharePoint. 
So they recently moved over their entire web infrastructure on top of the open source Drupal platform, and now are able to push out content uh, contribution and content ownership out to business people. Financial services make big bets on open source. So NYSC Euronext, ING Bank. For tourist travel, Expedia.co.uk is on open source. Orbits Worldwide. For space travel, NASA. For green travel, Tesla Motors, which is this is the coolest thing someday when I'm really successful. Hopefully because you guys all at some point buy, uh, buy or start using Drupal. I want to get one of those. I can't afford it quite yet though. But it would be great. Tesla, it's fantastic. And again, just to kind of summarize, uh, many of the world's greatest brands use open source for their CMS platforms. So you can see some of them here from consumer companies like Twitter to the World Economic Forum to The Economist to even uh, the White House over in the States. And to kind of summarize this, this is a quote from Forrester Research uh, who did a little bit of research on open source CMS recently. And their quote were, uh, open source uh, web content management solutions are emerging as a viable solution across a variety of industries, not just traditional open source strongholds. So again, an example of just the growing pervasive nature of open source CMS. So myth number two is that open source isn't secure. So again, here's another data point from Forrester Research who did this uh, sort of deep uh, intelligence project on open source. So they talked to a pharmaceutical organization who believed that open source CMS solutions were actually more secure than proprietary ones, and an open source has a better job of handling vulnerabilities. Another organization that had the same finding was the uh, US Department of Defense. And in talking about open source, the idea that continuous and broad peer review where people are checking out the code means it's actually more secure. So when you think about open source, all of the code is available, right? If you go to drupal.org, and you're a, a nerdy developer, you can download all the code that makes Drupal sing. So what happens is, because so many people look at the code, it's made super secure. So that's why you see a lot of the, the largest organizations and the most secure organizations like uh, the City of London and the, the US federal government use open source because it is super secure. And I think, again, uh, a good example is london.gov.uk uh, Boris Johnson, who I've heard is an interesting chap. I've never met him before. But uh, apparently Boris is interesting, as I've been told. And uh, open source in Drupal power, london.gov.uk. Uh, Boris is in good hands because uh, in the US, Barack Obama, uh, in his site, also uses Drupal. Uh, so there are a number of sites. About 70% uh, of .gov websites in the States are powered on top of Drupal. This is a really interesting one that I'm going to share with you. It's called We the People. So this is a site in the, in the US that is about connecting government to constituents. And what, uh, what they're allowed to do is submit petitions. And a petition could be something about a serious matter like gun control. But sometimes petitions get a little bit, us, us Americans are a little bit crazy sometimes. So, but the nice thing about it is it gives these uh, constituents a voice. And one of those voices was, a, a petition to secure resources and funding and begin construction of a Death Star by 2016. Star Wars, the Death Star. So some American constituents wanted us to create a Death Star and 25,000 of them signed this petition, which means that it actually had to be looked at and reviewed by the US government, who then responded to it. Uh, but again, all of this was done on top of the Drupal platform, and it really has become a great way because serious petitions like gun control are now brought forward by the constituents and you know, made available out to the, the federal government. So a really interesting use case. Myth number three is that open source won't scale to handle the world's largest sites. So here's my Facebook page, not because I'm proud of it, particularly this is the Smashing Pumpkins, my favorite band. Um, I live in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm a computer science guy. Uh, the point here is that uh, eight out of the top 10 sites on the internet all use open source. So the Drupal product itself runs on the same architecture as Facebook. So PHP and MySQL and, and all of these open source uh, products. So when you look at companies like Facebook and Twitter and Amazon and Yahoo, these are all companies who are building their business on top of these open source technology stacks. And open source dominates, open source CMS specifically, dominates the internet. So this is a chart looking at Alexa top uh, 10,000 sites. So Alexa is a way to rank the size of sites. And when you break down CMS usage across Alexa 10,000 sites, 
you can see Drupal has about 42.3% of those sites. WordPress has some, Joomla has some, but these are all open source CMS products. So the, the largest commercial CMS product that makes this list is SharePoint, uh, which isn't surprising because of Microsoft's size and scope, but really open source CMSs dominate the internet and dominate uh, the CMS for big companies. And one question I ask, and this is like, this is like a picture in my nerdy CMS world. This is like a picture of John and Paul or like, you know, super, this is uh, Dries who founded Drupal. Anyone know the guy on the right over there? That's the guy who founded WordPress, calling him Matt Mullenwig. So WordPress is also, so this is like a meeting of the CMS gods. Uh, and they both have, again, what's consistent, they both have really cool haircuts, unlike me. Uh, so one of the big questions in the open source CMS world is, is WordPress a CMS? How many of you use WordPress? How many of you are just running a blog on WordPress? Pretty simple blog. How many of you are put, building your whole site on WordPress? Right, so a fair number of you. So uh, you know, the question is, you know, WordPress is a CMS, Drupal is a CMS, Sitecore is a CMS, you know, there are lots of great CMSs out there, but is WordPress the same? Um, and my argument would be that WordPress is great as a publishing platform. WordPress makes it super easy for marketing people like you guys to publish content. And WordPress can be configured to do lots of different things, but it's really not designed to be sort of, it's not typically used to be the sort of uh, company-wide platform for all things digital, although it certainly can be. Uh, but where WordPress, I think, has a little bit of limitations revolve around things like an editorial process and workflow and version history and some of the things that more of the enterprise CMS products tackle a little bit better. Um, but WordPress is something that, that we watch closely and, and uh, has certainly grown an unbelievable amount over the past 10 years or so. Uh, so I think it's something that, that we so certainly look at. But I don't think it's the same kind of a CMS as is Drupal and is some, uh, some of the other commercial CMS products. All right, myth number four is that open source requires tribal knowledge. And tribal knowledge means that it's this, you know, to deploy something like a Drupal or WordPress, you've got to find somebody who has a very limited, hard to find skill set. And I think the reality is, because open source is, is free, because there are tens and thousands of developers out there, you have a pretty massive talent pool for open source talent. So looking at the Drupal community specifically, there are 800,000 active community members on Drupal.org. So Drupal.org is really the site that houses the Drupal products and the Drupal community. So 800,000 active community members, 16,000 code contributors. And this is what's astounding about open source, because open source is not built by one, per, one company or one vendor or one engineering team. It's built by a whole ton of people. If you're a smart developer and you want to build something, you build it on top of Drupal, you share it back with the community, and you can you know, continuously make the product better. There are developers in 228 companies, there are thousands of companies, Drupal expertise. So Drupal and the open source community has just an absolute massive, massive base. And one of the things that Acquia provides for the Drupal community is support. So we provide the ability to call someone, to get trained on how to develop against Drupal. We'll help you support some of your, uh, some of the commercial, the modules that have been built around Drupal. So one of our value propositions is just helping companies be successful with Drupal. And the role that we play is important in the open source world, just like you have Red Hat to support Linux. If, if you're a Linux user, as an example, we play that same role in the Drupal community. Uh, we help make sure that people are successful with open source through best practices, training, enablement, et cetera. And then my last myth is that open source won't work well with my marketing tools. And I think this is really important because I said earlier, uh, one of the things that I fundamentally believe as a marketer is that we've got to stop thinking about disparate technologies. Again, we've got to stop, we've got to think about how our website works with our CRM. Why is our marketing automation system not connected to our website? Simple example. How many of you in here use marketing automation? A few. Just one, really? How many of you have a CRM? That's good. So think about all the data in your CRM, all the customer data you have. You have the, you know, the name of a customer, you have their industry, you have what products they've purchased from you, you know the last time a sales rep talked to that person. You have all this great data about your customers, yet when your customer lands on your website, it's almost like you've lost all that data. 
So think, right, let me think about, so I'm, let's say I'm about to buy a product from one, of your, from one of your companies and I'm talking to one of your sales reps and I've been going to your website and I've been reading your white papers, I've been responding to your emails and then when I come to your homepage and your website, I get the same experience as every other visitor gets. It's almost like you're, you're having amnesia about your relationship with that customer. So I think the idea is we should connect all the different marketing tools and sources of data that we have to our website so that we can deliver a relevant experience by taking what we know about our customers and making it useful on our website. So I think the idea is that we have these best of breed technology investments. Companies like Eloqua and Marketo in the marketing automation space and Exact Target in email and Salesforce and Sugar CRM in the CRM space and, you know, and, and Radiant 6 and social analytics, right? So there's a number of great tools out there. What Drupal can become and open source products become through all of the modules that exist, all these pre-built integrations, there is a pre-built integration, a pre-built module for Drupal that's going to connect to pretty much any marketing system that you own. So I think you'll find if you go in the Drupal community and Drupal.org and you search for how to integrate Drupal with whatever tool you're using, that integration piece is already going to exist. So the way that, you know, in this way, Drupal kind of becomes this connective ecosystem that connects your customers who come to your website to all of the marketing data and tools and, and databases that you have so you can use all of this data to make your website more relevant to your customers. And one example of this, and I think why open source becomes really uh, powerful, is Pinterest. How many of you use Pinterest? I've never logged in once. I don't get it. It's the most confusing thing to me since the advent of the internet. I don't understand it, but apparently I'm the only one. Um, Pinterest just raised a whole ton of money at like a $500 million valuation. It's crazy. So Pinterest uh, hit critical mass about a year ago. So in February of 2012, Pinterest hits 10 million unique visitors. A month later, a Drupal module was created that lets people pin images right from their website. And then within a month after that, 15 sites go live on Drupal with Pinterest. And the example here is that in our world as marketers, things move super fast. Right? So we I mean Pinterest didn't exist really a year ago and now it's one of the sort of go-to social networks, especially for shopping. So since we can't predict what happens in marketing, having a platform like Drupal where you don't have to go to your vendor or go to your IT staff or your developers and say, I need you to go build me a Pinterest integration and then your developer and your IT team says, okay, I'll have that six months from now. In the open source world, Pinterest became big, the Drupal community built a Pinterest integration, released that integration out to the community, and 15 sites go live within a month later. So that sort of speed of innovation is really, really difficult outside of the open source world because just commercial companies can't keep up with that pace. So I'm going to skip over some of these and just I've only got a few minutes here left. The last commercial part uh, about Dystoquia, as I've mentioned, we're a company that uh, provides products and services for Drupal. Uh, around three areas, content, so content management, community, so building social communities, so uh, customer communities, partner communities, and then commerce for organizations that sell things via digital channels. So basically, we are a cloud company that has built out a Drupal cloud for these three big use cases. You can learn more at our, uh, at our booth over in the corner. We're kind of hidden away, unfortunately. I just signed up for this show next year, and I've got a massive booth, so I'm very happy about that. So uh, you'll see a bigger presence from us next year.